All right, so Ventura Highway by America. This was uh, on their 1972 album, um, Homecoming, written by uh, Dewey Bunnell. And uh, just one of those great kind of magical songs of the 70s. Um, you know, just really, really great song. And it gets probably as much airplay today as ever. Uh, it's just got that enduring kind of optimistic feel about it, you know. And uh, Dewey Bunnell wrote uh, Horse With No Name and Tin Man. And he's kind of the master of the two-chord song. I mean, there's more chords in all of these songs, but the main progression, like in... Uh, That, that's kind of two chords, and uh, you know, two chords again, and this one, you know, two chords over and over, but um, the way he puts it together is just fantastic, you know, he's a great songwriter. And um, before I get going on this, the, uh, the bass player on this song was a guy called Joe Osborne. He's kind of an L.A. session guy, and uh, uh, like I learned his bass part for my demo, and man, I tell you, what a great bass player. Um, you know, just so good. Uh, you know, there's a reason these songs last, I think, because the musicianship on them is so good. And it's Gary Malabar playing drums on this track, too, which was, um, he played with the Steve Miller band. But the bass part is so good, it's so melodic, and uh, makes such a huge difference to the song. And if you played this song just holding on to the roots, like, you know, uh, I would do, <laughs> amateur bass player, uh, it just wouldn't be the same. This bass really, really lifts the song, I think. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, it's in the key of D, although you never actually play a D, it's a D major 7. And uh, the first chord, let's go over the rhythm first, and then uh, later on we'll go over those little lead lines. And there's also a part uh, in the chorus, and we'll go over that too. It's an awesome part that really makes it, I think. But anyways, the main bulk of the song, um, we're going to start on this G chord. And it's just like doing a G bar chord, except you just lift your uh, finger so you get that open E. You could also play it like that, you know, as long as that open E is sounding right. Okay, so that's your first one, technically is a G6, or you could call it um, a 13th. It doesn't matter, it's that open E string that you gotta get, right? And then we're going to this D major 7, just a bar, three um, G, B, and E strings, right? So it's just back and forth between those two chords. And then later on, we've got this chord, which is A4, uh, D4, G2, and open B, open E. It's like an F sharp, well, it's a weird chord. It's got the third in it, the minor third, and the fourth. So I suppose it's an F minor 11. Not sure, actually, but that's how you play it. And then we go to this chord, which is just like an E minor, with that D note there on B3. When I play it, I just I hang my third finger over there to mute that low E string. You don't need to. I just do to keep the same. To keep the same sort of um, tone to the strings. I find if I get that low E, it just kind of overbears that part. Anyways, so uh, one, two, three. Four, and that's it, right? That's all the chords to this. But the trick is the strumming. And the strumming is, it's tough in this one, right? Um, I mean, it's easy to do badly, <laughs> but to get it down tight, um, you know, you really got to get the strumming good. Okay, so it goes like this. that's the main pattern at the beginning. Now that pattern changes and we'll get into that as we go along. So what we're going to do is this. I'll do it really slow. Okay, so we've got a down. And the down is just on the bass strings. And then a down on all the strings. And we've got kind of a... a um, 
a, an up down kind of scratch with the strings muted. Right? And then two downs. Down on the low, down on the high. And then a mute. There. And then another down. Okay? Really slow. Right? And then bum bum to start the next chord. Okay, so that might take a bit to get up to speed and in, 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 in time, right? So that's the main pattern. Now that pattern changes, okay? So um, the other main pattern is like this. And um, where those patterns uh, change, you kind of have to listen to the track. Right, because I don't really want I you know don't have time to sit here and say it goes here here and here, um, but the song starts out like this, right, and that one sort of comes in, but like I say, listen to I've listened to my demo or just listen to the original track and you'll see that um, you know a lot of guys just play it the whole way like that but it doesn't go like that right and actually after the first verse and chorus I'm not sure if he I don't think he ever does that again I think it just okay and that pattern is like down um, So it's down, down, up, with a mute in between. You could go up, two ups, but I like to go down. And that down up there. Right? And the same here. Course one was um, strumming that D minor or D major seven. You don't want to be hitting the E or the uh, e, uh, A string there, right? Okay, so that's the main patterns, and then it gets into this part here. Um, so. that's just and then we go the rhythm is like E minor 7 and the strumming there like so, there's three guitars in this right but one of the guitars is kind of going keeping it really simple but
but the other guitar is going crazy there, right? So it's kind of going like... Right? So it's really... It ends up with this. Just that G6 thing. Okay, and then we're back into the, you know, just carries on another verse, another chorus. Okay, so that's pretty well it for the strumming parts. Now the lead part, of course that's done in harmony. I'll show you the high part first. Um, it's just a trill from five to seven on the E to B7. Then if we do it again, right, trill on the B string this time. Then right, but we hammer that and back to G7, the D note, right? Do it again. land on the D flat note, uh, G6. And there's a couple little add-ons where he'll go. That's just B5, uh, B5 B7. That's the first add-on. And, you know, again, listen to my demo or listen to the original track to find out where that occurs. And then there's another little add-on where he goes right okay and then the other ending of that part uh, just before the chorus he goes okay so 14 e14 e12 e9 e7 B9, B7, or sorry, B10, B7, G7. Okay, and that's it for that part. Now, of course, it's in harmony, and the harmony is lower, and it's kind of based around that D chord, right? So we're going to go just a trill, E2, E3, to B3. And then a trill there to the A note on G2, right? To match that, it's a hammer to G4, the B note, right? So do it again. Except land on the A note on G2. And the add-ons for that, to match the high part, the first one would be... Right? And the second one would be... Okay? And that bit that... That goes high, the matching harmony would be... Ten, E ten, E nine, B ten, B eight, B seven, G seven, and then the B note on D ten or D nine. So we got okay to match that. Okay, and that's it for the harmony part. Obviously, <laughs> you know, this is um, a tough one to play on your own. If you're playing it by yourself, you're just going to wind up doing the rhythm. Because if you stop off to... It, 
it just sounds dumb, right? Uh, so, um, you know, really, it's a record. It's a recording. You know, that's I'm trying to pick off all the parts of the recording. And to me, the recording, um, it's pretty well always the recording that uh, is so great. You know, um, unless you have three guitar players, this is just not going to work, right? But it's still cool to find out all those parts that they throw in and the way they all mesh together. Um, so that's pretty well it for this one, except there's one other guitar part that I mentioned earlier, and it comes in in the chorus. And it's barely noticeable, really, you know? Like, you could listen to this song for 20 years, you may never hear this part. But to me, it whether you hear it or not, it's making the chorus, it's lifting the chorus up. And it goes like this. such a great part whoever came up with that I mean that's awesome you know that is great like guitar part writing um, so all it is it's just fret on B8 open G open E and we're just going down on the G and back on the E and the B that would be one cycle of the pattern right Right? And then we're going to fret 7th fret G and B and do the same thing. Open E still. Alright? And that's all there is to that part. But to me, that really just makes the whole thing come alive. So we just go through it one time. Okay? Almost like a banjo banjo part and up to speed it's like okay so if you have two guitar players and you're playing this song or you know hopefully you have three get one guy doing that and it'll just bring the whole thing alive right okay and remember not to Not to do that through the whole song because it really only happens in the first verse. And listen to the track to find out when it changes from. To that second pattern, right? And it'll make all the difference, right? Make It'll sound more authentic if you get those rhythms right. Anyways, that's it for this one. Fantastic song. One of my all-time favorite you know, desert island kind of songs, right? So I hope you get something out of it. I hope you enjoy playing it, and uh, talk to you next time.